Howdy friends, we are now on PowerPoint Chapter 3, Presentation Design. We are going to learn to create shapes, draw lines and connectors, change shape effects, create smart art, modify it, change the layout, create and modify word art, resize objects, flip objects, group, ungroup, and regroup, color objects, and order objects. So here we go. Let's go ahead with creating shapes. I'm going to go down to this blank slide, and I'm going to go to Insert shapes and I can choose a wide variety of shapes but let's just say that we're going to talk about a process and we'll just put some flow chart shapes in here. Now whenever I do create that shape the format, the drawing tools come up because I just drew something and I get a completely different menu group. So let's go to edit shapes and edit points. Now this is something a lot of people don't realize is that you put this rectangle in there but it has edit points. So you can change the shape of your rectangle or any other object that you are working with. And it's really good to play with these things and see what you can do with them. That doesn't even look like a rectangle. Who knew? Now, my next shape, let's choose something, I always like these arrows, you've seen them before. All right, now we've got a couple of shapes. What about colors? We can definitely change our colors and we can change our shape outline. So, ooh, that's interesting against the gray. That's not in our color palette. So when you're going into things, these standard colors go with your color palette, or the, pa the colors up here do. So you'll notice that it's different color palettes depending upon what our theme is. These are the standard colors. So anytime it asks you for a standard color, it's going to be the same red, but these are your theme colors. All right, now let's say that we wanted a connector. So I'm going to get this connector, and when I hover over, this, I should, I get connector points that pop up and I can connect it to those points. Now this one, this object, its point is right there. Not real crazy about that. So let's look and see. I like the squiggly lines a lot better. So there's a connector point. I'm going to hover over that and I'm going to start there. And then I'm going to go over here. I'm going to guess that there's one right there. Now, when I move this, my connector points stay connected. I can click on this and I can choose a line style. I could get a dotted line. And let's just have a look at that because our, our grid, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the grid because the grid is really distracting. So how about we go into view and we turn off grid lines. There we go. We can see a little bit better, but of course, whenever we put it on slideshow, you can see even better what it is that we've drawn. Now, I'm gonna hit the escape button, and I'm gonna go back in here, and um, I can uh, right-click on it and go edit text and type my text in there. And this one, let's see. I'm not real crazy about the placement of the text. Now, there are so many things that I can do with these and it really helps to begin to understand, for instance, rotate. I can actually flip horizontal or flip vertical. More rotation options. So I can set my rotation precisely. And notice that my connectors stayed connected with my lines. So I can do the, I don't really have to group things. There are times whenever we create graphics and we group them together. Another very interesting thing that I love, control D, duplicate. You know what, How about I just get rid of that box. Delete, that's gone. So um, it duplicated it, but it doesn't have any connector points. So control D will create as many as you want. You could all do, also do control C, control V, but control D is just so much handier. 
All right, now we've got um, some other options. We don't have more than one thing selected, so group doesn't highlight. And then we have a line. So I could select a couple of these. I'm gonna hold the shift key and I'm gonna select this one and then I'm gonna hit a line and do a line top and that aligned their tops. And if I had a whole row, so let's go down here and put in a new slide, so Control M. And we're gonna draw on this. We're going to insert um, a shape. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna make, uh, and it wouldn't have mattered whether I pulled the rectangle here or the rectangle here. We're gonna make just this little house. Okay. Now I'm going to insert another shape. I'm going to pull a triangle and I'm going to start right there at the corner and then go up. It's going to have a very steep roof. I think I want my roof a different color. There we go. That's very different. I don't really like that, but whatever. Now we'll put another rectangle here for the door. Okay, there we go. Now if I had made a window, I could Put the whole thing together now I want a whole bunch of these so I'm going to hold down the shift key now at this point I could do control D and it would duplicate them but when I click off of them they then are individual objects again so your better bet if you're through editing this and you can go back and ungroup is to go ahead and group it so it's right there in the arrange menu group and then I can hold down the control key and drag it, or I can do control D, but control and drag is handy. And control drag works to copy things in Word, Excel. That's a handy little feature. All right, so now I've got all of them, but I kind of, my village, I kind of want a very orderly village, so I'm gonna create an orderly village. And I'm going to go to align top and then I'm going to go to the align middle distribute horizontally now they are perfectly aligned now I can group all these groups oh look watch what happens I can rotate them all at once suddenly they're turning into rockets or pencils I don't know I can now group them and then when I do control D there, now I have this group selected and I can ungroup, ungroup and click off of them and now I could delete every other one. There we go. And then I'll go to this group and I'll ungroup them. And then I'll delete this, this one and this one. There we go. And then maybe I'll just group them all. Now I could drag and everything is completely enclosed. Should have been selected. Clearly that didn't work. There we go. So I must have left a little corner out. So everything that was completely enclosed was selected. Something that's partially enclosed won't be selected. And I can group them back. Go back to arrange and group. Now you notice that my, my palette's kind of compressed but all of a range is here order objects now there's times when you'll have a compound object like this and it's important that the door be on top of the house because if the door is behind the house think of it as just stacks of paper it's not going to show and so it, order will become important so I could when I click this and I go to arrange and I go um, send it back it's there but it disappears and then you would actually have to move this in order to find your door so that's important too and when you're layering objects on top of objects sometimes you do have to play with what's on top and what is behind now i'm going to do control z well i'm going to have to click back there we go. They are all together. I can resize them all together.
pretty handy. They're not groups, they're just all selected. So all selected does the same thing as if they were grouped because now I can go down in here and decide I'm deleting this one and this one and this one. There we go. Ooh, I don't like the way that they're distributed. It's not pleasing. So I'm gonna shift, oh, shift. Yes, they are grouped. And then I'm gonna go to arrange and position. Line, distribute horizontally. Now they are equal distance apart. They don't really look like it because of this and this, but I'm going to say that it did what it says it did. So I'm going to select them all again and then we're going to just put them on the same street. Arrange. Align, align tops. There we go. They're still all selected. Pop them back up straight. Okay, there's our fun with objects. Now we're going to look at some smart art. And smart art is just the coolest. So I already know what I think this has to do with bees. Wow, that's a surprise. And I'm going to click on the smart art. And remember, I've got the design and the format. So I can go over here and um, I can change the layout. And when I change the layout, it changes everything about it. So you don't have to delete something and go all the way back. You can just keep rolling around your layouts until you find the one. And when you hover over it, it's going to tell you the name of it. Vertical block list, table list, segmented process. But of course, I like the honeycomb. OK, so let's look at this and let's go to format and let's go to larger. So it made that one larger than the others. And it continues to make it larger, which is yes, two control Z, Z, Z. Oh, nope, 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 nope. We want to go back to our honeycomb. Honeycomb. There we go. So the queen is the one that should be larger because the queen bee is larger than any of the others. There we go. Queenie is larger. Everything else is littler. Um, I want to encourage you to explore the options that are available. Notice that when I click off of it, these options are grayed out. I can't do anything and that's because I don't have anything selected. So edit in 2D. Now click it and turn it off. That is not very attractive, is it? Well, it doesn't really matter because we're not going for attractive. We are just exploring our options. Now that edited only that one. Control Z. There we go. Let's get back here. All right. So let's look at this design tab again so I can add a shape. I'm going to add a shape. Hello. And there we go. I've got two new shapes that it added below. And add shape, add shape after. There we go. So you are not stuck with your layout that you originally had. Now, this is also pretty cool that um, we have all of these different preset formats that we can choose. Only a few of which actually look like honeycombs. Anyway, there are, so reset graphic. Oh, there we go. So all of my weird things I did that distorted it are now reset. And we can go back to that. And we've got some leftover little things here, like the queen is stuck out there and brood is stuck out there. But those are all things that, and then let's see, convert to text or convert to shapes. 
So you can highlight text and convert it to shapes. And that's very, very handy. So um, if I was going to create a brand new smart art, I'm gonna go down here and do control M for a new slide. And then I'm gonna go to insert smart art. And it brings up the whole dialogue box. And it's important to look, if you're trying to show relationships, we have certain things that show relationships. And a Venn diagram is a relationship. If we want to show hierarchy, then, you know, this is on top, this is mid-level, so this is, looks like an organization chart, which would say president, CEO of the company, and then the next level of management. And then we also have cycles and processes and lists, and then, um, some that include also a picture. And that's kind of nice because you could put an employee's picture in there or other pictures. So picture strips, okay. Now we can put the text here first. Second, and I just use the arrow key. Now all I have to do to put the picture in is click on it and then tell it I want it from a file and I downloaded some other pictures of downloads and let's see well there aren't very many so I'm gonna put that one there and then we'll click here browse I'm gonna put that one there and I'm gonna click here browse and I'm gonna put that one there so there we go surprise B pictures and that's how quick it is. It's also just as quick to go ahead and change. And then it shows you how it's gonna look. Well, that's maybe better. There you go. All right, the last thing that we're gonna look at is word art. I really like word art. It does a, a lot of things that are really interesting and can really add you really this is not a professional presentation by any means this is all about showing you some of the tools that are at your disposal so first of all I'm going to choose a color scheme and type it here there we go and I have my little word art thing okay click off of it get back I wait until I hover over that edge and I get that four-headed arrow and then I can move it. Now the old word art was just one place and you actually chose a shape and a set of colors. Now we have to go to um, the text effects in order to get what we want and interesting that it shows you the rotations but the first thing I want to do is do the transform. And I don't know why, I, I like that a lot. And then sometimes I like that. And all kinds of things that you can do with it. So I'm gonna go with that. That's not very attractive, I'm just gonna say. Now we can go back into text effects and we can bevel it. Again, it's looking really tacky, but that's okay because I'm trying to show you tacky, tacky, tacky. Oh, I didn't have that selected. Let's go with text outline, purple, text effects, shadow. There we go. The shadow does not show on there unless we change the shadow color. So let's have a look at our beautiful PowerPoint presentation concerning chapter three presentation design and recognize that I have not followed rules of good design. So again, it shows us the preview of the next slide. I'm gonna tell you that I love bees, that there are eggs, drones, workers, brood, types of bees, and we love bees. And on this one, we looked at rotation, we looked at flipping, we looked at the connectors. We changed the line value here. We changed this one. We edited the shape using the edit points. 
And then here we learn to duplicate and we learn to change things all at once. We learn to distribute it horizontally, vertically, to align features of it. And then we made our little smart art with pictures. And that's it. So you should know everything that you need to know about the, the features and functions that you're going to use for Chapter 3 PowerPoint. So have fun with it and don't get too frustrated.